Welcome back to Asian Pacific America. We have a two-part segment coming up as we discuss what it takes to run and thrive at a Polynesian performing arts school, and then we will watch a performance by some of the students. Now, joining me right now is the instructor, or Kumahula, of the Nahula Omokai Aina Amimotu Aina. She is Catherine Blankenship. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. First of all, say your full name and the full name of the school so we at least we know it's pronounced correctly at least once here. All right. My full name is Catherine Kauilani Okalawai Blankenship. The school is Nahula Omoku Aina Kuhai Halau Ame Motuaina. I had practiced that earlier, but I just couldn't do it live. So. You came close. Okay. Well, Catherine, thank you again for joining us. Uh, give us an idea here. First of all, uh, your, your uh, performing arts school has quite a long history. When did it start? Tell us a little bit about how it started. Well, it, as it turns out, 2015 is our 20th year. It started as an avocation for my family. We had a family reunion in uh, 1989, it was, and it started growing from there. Then in 95, my family, my husband and son and I, started giving lessons and teaching drumming and so forth, and we were asked to perform at Luau's. And so it's just grown from there until in 2004, my avocation became my vocation, so it's now my full-time job. Now, we talked a little bit about this. Uh, you know, for a lot of people, they may not understand the differences or what kind of differences are with Hawaiian and Polynesian, Tahitian, mm -hmm. and all the other kind of dances. Uh, you offer both. Uh, why do you do that? Are there similarities, or are they just both as appealing? Um, they're very different. Uh, when you start studying them, I know when you watch them, it's it looks like it's all about the hips and they mm -hmm. look very similar. But they're very different. And uh, once you start studying them, you understand the differences. One of the main reasons they're different is because in Hawaii, when the missionaries came, hula went underground. Mm -hmm. It was not as welcome in the public until Kalakaua started bringing it back, but it went underground, and so we still have a connection to our gods, goddesses, ali'i, and so forth. In Tahiti, when the missionaries came, it was totally destroyed. So there is, there is a lack of knowledge of what real ancient Tahitian dancing is. What we do now was started in probably 1899, the revival of their heva, and has come forward from that. And uh, so they're very, very different. In Tahiti, the, there's a break in the tradition, I would say, is the biggest, biggest difference between the two. And then the other thing you always hear is hula is about the hands and the story. Mm -hmm. Tahitian is about the hips. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, you were talking about how you want to also promote the culture and values. Yes. Now, how do you do that with the dancing? How does that interlock? Um, when you join a halau, which is what we are, halau is the Hawaiian word for school, you... Uh, agree to make us a part of your family, essentially, and a daily practice. There are certain things that uh, practitioners do every day to ensure that they're following the, the protocol of the school. And so, you know, we value uh, being reverent to our gods and goddesses, whoever they may be, whoever you worship. We value family above everything else. We value hard work and uh, just doing your very, very best. And so all of these values come out in the way that we perform our dance and the way we present ourselves. Now, as we see some pictures of the dancers, you can see how the age range is quite from very young to much older. Um, a lot of people start off very young and stay with the school for a long time. Huh? That's right. I've had dancers start with with me when they were three or four years old and uh, they graduate from high school. I have kids who are now getting their law degree. They're going to med school. They've got their master's in nursing. So I want to be taken care of in my old age by all of my <laughs> former students. But that's right. They stay with me for a long time, and a lot of them do come back if they settle in the Bay Area. Real quickly, because we want to give time for your performance, okay. what's going to be new coming up this year for you? Um, the first thing I want to say is that we're starting new classes. All new dances start next week, January 12th, and we welcome all new students to come and try it out and especially in our tiny hips class what we call tiny hips that's for the three to five year olds to come out and try we really love to have them as a part of the hala well thank you for sharing that with us we thank appreciate you. it thank and you. of course it is a lot to take in but it'll be a lot easier once we take in the performance and that's still ahead so come on back for our finale